Let's stick with this and hear a view coming in from Cholamandalam Investments, Arun Selvan, sharing his outlook on auto loans and more. Uh, well, uh, yes, there is an expectation that there will be rate cuts. Uh, my uh, personal view is it will take another quarter or so uh, before the RBI will follow suit of the FOMC uh, action of reduction in rates. Uh, having said that, yes, it will have positive impact to us because uh, while we are dependent mostly on bank lending, most of our bank lendings are benchmarked with indices rather than on their MCLR which makes it you know more amenable for absorbing the rate cuts that could come up in the near future so we will benefit a bit on the rate cut however the extent of rate cut is to be decided once only when we know how much rbi is willing to forego on that side Obviously, obviously. But just uh, for starters, say we're talking about, and, and you're right, we might take another quarter of four the rate cut cycle to sort of churn in India. But if we start with, say, a 25 basis point rate cut, as, as an exercise, what does a 25 basis point interest rate cut mean for you on the margin front? Uh, I would say in a very ballpark, uh, almost 50% of that could uh, pass through because, uh, you know, we, the rate cut would be effective only uh, mostly on the marginal borrowings, uh, while some of the previous uh, existing borrowings will undergo change as and when they come up for reset. There could be time lags on that. So I think in an immediate effect, you can see around 25 business points, around 10 business points coming on to the NIMS. And progressively, the balance could come in as the as the rest of the book gets reset on those respective reset dates. Mm -hmm. So a 25 basis point rate cut means a 10 basis point impact on NIMS. And this could... Come yeah. in by next quarter is the expectation. Obviously, we don't know when and how much and what the RBI does. But having said that, uh, Mr. Selvin, just to understand, has the interest rate regime so far been any kind of a deterrent to demand that you've been seeing? And I'm wondering if you'll see the reverse happening in terms of demand growing if rates actually are cut and some of that passes through. It has a day impact. Yes, you would have seen that uh, you know from the COVID days versus when the rates were really low to now, the rates have moved up and uh, we have absorbed the rates. And uh, wherever we could do a rate uh, reset where the book is on a floating rate basis, we have done a change in rates immediately on the most most part of the book, which are amenable for change. Whereas uh, the vehicle finance book, which is more a fixed rate book, is not amenable to change on the existing book. So there we need to only uh, move towards changing the marginal rate of uh, lending, which has, which, has, uh, which takes a longer time to reflect in the overall book. However, this will this is you are seeing this progressively coming into play as you may see that in the vital finance book, uh, NIMS improving over the quarters, uh, and you will see some more benefit coming in by the yield change also in the subsequent quarters. Mm -hmm. How much of your book is fixed right now, Mr. Selvin? Uh, on the lending side, which is our lending to the others, it is around 60% uh, of the book is uh, fixed okay. and um, the balance is floating. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just, uh, you know, because auto auto loans is the big business driver for you. I just want yes. to get your sense about how you have seen appetite, considering the numbers that we see from the industry on the CV front, even passenger vehicles, have not been as robust. Two-wheelers might be a bit of a different story. Are you seeing that reflective as well? Yes, we have seen some tightness, uh, more in the case of a heavy commercial vehicle. Thankfully, we focus on light commercials and mini lights on the commercial vehicle front. Even on the passenger car, the focus is more on rural. We need to see how the demand pans out. While monsoons have been fairly robust, uh, actually, in, in the continuing monsoons into September is actually a little bit of a negative because uh, there we will see uh, if there are over over. 
supply of water also is a problem in rural. Uh, so we, we have to be careful about that. We are waiting and watching. Most of the festivals are happening in Q3. That's when we expect the demand to zoom up uh, and we see including passenger cars and two wheelers and tractors demand going up in Q3. Uh, we need to wait and watch in Q3. What, Q2 what? would be similar to Q1, yeah. Okay, okay. I was just going to come to that in fact. What's the outlook for Q2? Because in Q1 you saw uh, net interest margins at about 7.6%. Slightly, slightly on the softer side. Pat was looking good though at 30%. So you see those sort of overall numbers continue at least on the NIM side? I can't talk too much about Q2 being, um, you know, it's at uh, the quarter has to get over. Uh, but I see similar trends, uh, you know, panning out in Q2 across various uh, line items. Okay, okay. And so, and you're saying festive, of course, bulk of it in Q3, so we'll see that coming in yes. then. What is the sort of outlook for the year, taking into consideration Q3 as well? What is the kind of bump up you see on NIMS in Q3? Because you'll have a double delight in that sense. You might have an interest rate cut coming in and demand growing as well. You know, we shouldn't count our chickens before, you know, the RBI announces that. Before the RBI uh, no hatches them. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's be, see, uh, we, we, as you know, or if you observed, we try to, you know, promise less and deliver better. So I wouldn't want to put mm. everything on the table right now about what may happen, which would, you know, sort of inflate the expectations. Okay. okay. So let's keep it at the same similar levels. Let the announcements come, then we will suddenly come back to you. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough, uh, Mr. Selvin. Uh, under promise and over deliver seems to be a wise uh, strategy. But uh, just to get a sense of outlook in terms of business strategy, um, a bit less concentration on auto loans, is that the plan? More diversification on the small and uh, personal loans, the business loans, as well as uh, the home loan front? The, 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 it is not less concentration on auto loans. Auto loans being a larger base, it will tend to grow. It is it is like, a, you know, the, it's more than 60% of the book or nearly 60% of the book. So that growth you know, would be little, seemingly lower than the rest of the portfolio. The focus would be more on mortgage loans, which is uh, loan against property and home loans. These are our, uh, you know, uh, more, more, the trust is on growing this book by both geographical expansion and customer base expansion. So we will be growing these books. The personal loan would remain more or less at similar percentage of AAM as we grow. We articulated that in our investor call. So when you look at it at a overall AAM, the share of AAM of vehicle finance will progressively come down over the next few years to around 50% levels. The mortgage book, both the lap and home loans would grow to around 30-35%. And then the rest of the book, which are the new portfolios, SME, CSL, and SBPL, these would be the residual 15% levels. This is what is our broad, uh, you know, way we are looking at growing the individual business lines. What is the rationale uh, behind this? If, if you can, you know, tell us about what your thinking is behind the strategy. Yeah, it, it follows uh, something similar to the BCG index, right? Like uh, you have the vehicle finance, which is our cash cow, and uh, which will be the one which will deliver the cash for growing the new businesses. The mortgage businesses are like our stars, like they are the ones where we are now comfortable growing them. We have been using or, uh, you know, experiencing these products over the last 10 years. And we are comfortable now in expanding the market uh, geographically and customer wise, as I said earlier, into uh, the entire country. We had been more focused on the south and some parts of the other regions uh, initially. So we will now go full hog. We have been doing that over the last uh, two years. Uh, we have now been growing the, uh, the branch presence to almost 50% of our vehicle finance branches are covered by these brand, by these products. 
the new businesses are the ones which are like uh, i would put it in the bcg terminology as a question marks where we are experimenting them we need to experiment and understand how and what they would pan out to be and if we find them good to go they will become stars of the future and they will be uh, the one which will and by that time the market businesses will become also add to the cash cow portfolio yeah, yeah so your investment advisory and brokerage brokerage uh, brokerage businesses are stars of the future category what is the kind of upside you're seeing in them because high growth but high competition as well yeah it is a separate subsidiary uh, we have a stolman and securities focusing on broking and investment as we we are growing the business and it would also become it is right now uh, part of the star, uh, question marks but it will certainly become a star given uh, how the market pans out all right um, you that's well uh, a, a detailed view on chola as well but before we wrap up 